Hey everyone, it's Deja from crochetheverafter.com. Let me get back a little bit further here so you can see the whole thing. This is our motif of the month of November 2015, and it's the Regal Diamond. This is actually um, a square that you can do either as a square or a diamond pattern, but I think it looks pretty as kind of a diamond. It kind of reminds me of like a damask kind of look, but it is considered an intermediate pattern because there's a lot of interesting kind of stitches that we do in it but if you watch the video it's not going to be that difficult so even if you're a beginner and you have determination you'll be fine as long as you know um, the basic stitches but we're using medium worsted weight a usj six millimeter hook and the pattern is below so go download that now and we will get started okay, we're going to start our motif with a slip knot on our hook so we have our tail just take a loop and twist it down and then pull the yarn that's attached to your ball through. Just give that a tug to tighten down and then put it on your hook. And we're going to create an open circle for this motif. So we're going to chain six. So we always yarn over, point it down, pull through, do that six times. Four, five, and six. And then we're going to join with a slip stitch in the first chain so we can have an open circle so just insert your hook anywhere in this first chain doesn't matter if you catch one loop or two i have two here yarn over pull through and then pull through the loop on your hook so we have a nice big open um, center that we can work into so we're going to start round one so the first thing we're going to do is chain four and chain four is going to count as a double crochet and a chain one. So we just yarn over and pull through. See, I always put my hook down to get through those chains easy. So the first three are going to count as a double crochet, and the last one's going to be a chain one. All right, and then we're going to begin our repeat for the round. So it's going to be a double crochet and a chain one. And we're going to do that 11 more times, so we have a total of 12 when we count this chain four. So we yarn over, insert our hook through that nice large hole we have, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the next two. Now we're going to chain one for space, and then do another one. So we're going to have a total of 12 kind of spokes in our wheel, and call them that. So keep going around until you get to the 12 and the chain one. And then we'll join up and start the next round. On my last chain one, and you'll see that we now have 12 spokes on our wheel, and we're going to join up. And what we're going to do, because you can see this big gap right here, this is just the circle, this is the ring, so you can move your double crochets around so it doesn't have such a big gap wherever it may be, so you can space them out nice and even. That's the benefit of working around the ring instead of into the chains. You can move it around and put it however you like. But we're going to go ahead and join with a slip stitch in the third chain of our chain four. So we're going to count from the bottom one, two, and three and put a slip stitch right there. You can also look for the fourth chain and go one over. So this one is connected to our stitch. You can see the chain one and then connect your slip stitch in that third chain. So now we have our full 12, and then we're going to fasten this off. So I'm going to do a long chain and cut it and get ready for our new color. And you can make this all in one color if you don't want to join new colors and weave them in. Totally up to you. But I'm going to do this in this cute aqua. So we're going to join with a standing stitch, and I love standing stitches because it doesn't give you this chain effect. There's no chains, we just start working our stitch. So we're going to do a slip knot on our hook again, here's my tail. And then to do a standing stitch, you're basically going to just start working the stitch that you're supposed to make. So we're making a treble, and it says to do it into any double crochet. So we look for our post for our double. And right above it is our V. See, it looks like the letter V. We're going to go into both of those loops. So to begin our treble, we always yarn over twice. So I'm going to hold onto the tail because if I just yarn over, I'm going to lose it. So hold onto your tail. 
yarn over twice, grab your work, make sure it's facing the right side. This is the back side. You can see how they look a little different, kind of like a weird twist. In the front, they have two little twists at the top, so you see it comes over like that. So we're going to put our hook through any of these double crochets, and then we're just going to work a treble crochet. So I yarn over and I pull through, still holding onto my tail, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, and point your hook down to get through easy. I'm sticking on something here. There we go. Yarn over, pull through the next two loops. And then yarn over and pull through the last two. So now I have a treble to begin my round and I have no unsightly chains. So now we're going to get on with the rest of the round. Alright, so the rest of this round looks difficult on the pattern when you read it, but it's actually not too bad. So the next thing we're going to do is chain three. So this treble is one of our corners and on each side of the treble will be a chain three. So we start our HDC four togethers next and they're kind of like a bobble stitch. So what you do is you yarn over and you insert your hook into the next chain one space. So we're in the double crochet, we're going just right into the next chain one space and pulling up a loop. We're going to do that three more times. So pull up your loops kind of high so you have a nice bobble look. If you pull them just to your shaft, it's going to be really small and kind of hard to work through. So pull it up nice and tall, yarn over, insert again, pull up another loop, yarn over, insert, pull up three, and kind of count it as you pull it up, and four. Then we're going to yarn over and we're going to pull through all of these loops. So point your hook down and get through all of those except for this treble. I kind of stop and I bring my loops back up because this treble is all bent over and it's hard to pull through. So I need to pull it up, hold on to my treble so that my stitch is normal and then pull through and that makes it a little bit easier. So now between all of these HDC four togethers that we're gonna do, we're gonna do three of them right now, we're gonna put chain two. So all of the HDC four togethers, not next to a corner stitch, will have chain two between them. So you'll see there's brackets and it says HDC four together, chain two, and do that twice. That is these two right here. And we don't include the other HDC four together in the brackets because we have to do a chain three after those because we're, oops, because we're about to make our corner. So I'm gonna do one more. Yeah, okay, third one done. Now we're gonna do a chain three because we're gonna make another corner. We're gonna make another treble. So I'm going to chain three, hold on, focus a little better, and then we are going to treble into our next double crochet. So we've been working in chain one spaces for the HDC four together. All the trebles will be in double crochets. Now if I just start doing my treble in this stitch right here, I'm doing it in the wrong spot. That is actually a chain one V, a chain one stitch. The bobble is covering my double crochet stitch, so I need to pull it over so that I can actually see my stitch here. So you can see there's kind of a big loop here and a nice big hole that I'm supposed to work into. So you can kind of tell the difference between the chain ones and the double crochets because the double crochets kind of have that big hole um, right at the base of their stitch. So make sure you're going into that and not the chain one space. So yarn over twice, insert your hook into that stitch. Pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. And then we're going to chain three because this is our corner stitch. And then we're going to start doing our bubbles again. So we're going to do that all the way around. And then we'll meet up at the end to join the round and finish our last round. Finishing up my last HDC four together. And then I just need to do a chain three so I can get to my treble to join. So three more chains. And then I'm going to join at the top of my treble and because it's not chains it's easy to see where that stitch is up at the top that I join in. I'm going to slip stitch and then I'm going to fasten off and get ready for round three with my gray. Okay time for round three. We're going to start with another standing treble on top of our treble from the last round. So we're gonna put a slip knot on our hook, stick your hook through, and start that treble again. So yarn over twice, 
find one of your trebles. So remember, we kind of have that chain stitches, and then we have that nice big hole. That's where our treble should, that's where the top of our stitch is. So you're going to go right inside of that hole, pull up a loop, and work off two loops at a time. Two, two, and two. And then we're going to start the rest of the instructions. So the first thing we're going to do is a pico which is going to give like a little point at the top of our treble. So we're going to chain three. And you'll see the special stitches section has what a pico is and it says chain three and then slip stitch in your first chain. So just insert your hook in there, pull loop through, and then we have a little pico. So it's like a little point for the top of our treble. All right, the rest of our pattern, we're gonna go ahead and chain one. So this is a pretty detailed round, so keep track of what you're doing so that you don't miss anything. And then we're gonna do four double crochets in our chain three space. So we're gonna yarn over, pull up loop, pull through two and two, do that three more times. And then we're going to skip a lot of stitches here. We're going to chain two. That's going to get us over to the middle of our poofs. And we're going to do a single crochet in that middle poof. So it's kind of that chain that we made that kind of locked it in right on top. We're going to single crochet right in there. I'm going to pull up a loop and single crochet. Then we're going to make kind of another pico, but it's going to be a bigger one. It's going to be a chain five, and we're not going to slip stitch into the first chain. We're instead going to slip stitch into the single crochet. So you're going to poke your, hole, poke your hook through the front to the back, yarn over, pull it through, and pull through the loop on your hook. So notice I always do my slip stitches in two steps. I pull through what's on the project and then I pull through what's on my hook. It just makes it easier than trying to get through everything at once. And that gives me a nice big round pico here. If I do it, if I slip stitch into the chain, it kind of looks lopsided. So by doing it into the single crochet, it looks a little bit better. So then we're going to get back over to our next chain three spot by chaining two. And then we're going to do another four double crochets in our chain three spot. Okay, I'm gonna finish off this side with a chain one and then I'm going to start everything over again. So I'm gonna treble in my treble. I'm gonna do my pico, so chain three, and slip stitch. Then I'm gonna do the chain, I'm sorry, chain one, and then the four double crochets, and then we'll do chain two, single crochet, chain five, slip stitch, chain two, DC four times and then another chain one. So we just do that all the way around. Make sure you follow your pattern so you're not forgetting any of these little chains or picots. So you have all the correct points at the end and we'll meet up right at the end. Okay, just finished the last four double crochets. I just have one chain to do and then a slip stitch. So I wanna do the slip stitch in the treble, not in the pico, so make sure that standing stitch is easy to see where to insert your hook because it kind of creates this large hole here. So we're just going to insert our hook through, yarn over, pull through, and fasten off. And then we only have ends to weave in. So we're going to tail there we go. So once you weave in everything, this is a good block or this is a good motif to block if you want to get your points very pointy so you can block all of these picots so that they have a certain look so you can get them really nice and pointy or let me show you one that I've already woven in the ends you can leave it so it's just kind of a little nub so if I don't block it, it kind of looks like nubs if I block it then I can get them even further out and pointy. So that's the difference in the blocking. Um, this is a cool, it's, I want it, I call it a diamond because I think it looks cool as a diamond, but it's also a square because, you know, you got it. But you can use it as a square as well.
thought a diamond would be really pretty if you could place them and kind of you could do like a triangle shawl if you're to connect them at the picots and just keep coming down so that could be the point of your triangle shawl and you come down that would be really pretty but that is our motif of the month if you have any questions leave them below and thank you for watching